You've seen the movies, long walks on the beach, 24 hour room service, and all the picturesque honeymoon scenes. It's the kind of unrealistic expectations my next guest says can get couples off to a rocky start. And she's calling on parents to kickstart a conversation that will prepare young couples for reality. Laura Brotherson is a licensed marriage and sex therapist and author of the new book, From Honeymoon to Happily Ever After, 23 Keys to Prepare for a Sex Ordinary Marriage. She's here to tell us what Hollywood won't about honey moons good to see you hello Brooke. we're kind of referring to this as like birds and the bees 2.0 because this might be kind of an awkward one for parents to again revisit now that their kids are entering that adult phase of life sure. why did you decide to take on the honeymoon phase in the educational sense yeah well because there's so few people that have information or helpful tools to help them be prepared before they get married and so I'm thrilled that we finally have a resource so people can learn these four things that we're going to talk about and there's a lot more but we're going to sure. just hit the most important ones so that they can be prepared before they get there. Do you find that couples, I mean, uh, there's there's been some hints that culturally here in Utah, we maybe are a little behind and not as prepared as we should be for this stage of life. Do you think that's justified? No, because I think that maybe the rest of the world is, uh, maybe has a little bit more information, but it's not the right information. Uh -huh. So to me, we're no different than anyone else. There's so few people that I think are well prepared for sure. what they need to know and the kind of mindset and and just educa education they need going in you touched on the first buzzword and that is mindset yeah. you really want couples and, and parents to help these new couples yes. to embrace a healthy mindset yes. around intimacy what does yes. that look like so it's kind of two parts one is we just you almost kind of need to make sure you check through and see if there are any kind of negative beliefs attitudes things that you need to kind of clean out a little bit and so that can be done by even just reading affirming things about sex like this book and and the second Second part is there's often a lot of anxiety and some fear going into a honeymoon especially for Christian couples that it might be their first time so you've got to kind of work through that and getting educated and being able to talk about sex are two of the ways that you relieve anxiety and fear so education is your next point yep. and is this something that you recommend doing together as a couple is this a separate study I mean, what does that look like it's both and and you know kind of skipping down to you know being able to talk about it you're you're both getting getting educated like with parents, other married siblings and, and friends, but then also being able to talk about it as a couple before you get married. Because mm. if you can't talk about it, you're not going to be able to work on it. Mm. But backing up to the education piece, there's three things that people do not really know. And it's they've got to understand the sexual wiring differences between men and women. Okay. They need to understand the idiosyncrasies or the intricacies of female sexual wiring. Specifically, one thing being that women tend to need a little bit of a warm up, whereas men don't tend to need that. Mm. That's a big train wreck waiting to happen if you don't discuss that. And the third one is there actually is stuff to know about male sex sexual wiring and being able to kind of affirm their, their sexuality as well. And I know you dive into that education yep. in more detail in the book, yep. uh, to the vocabulary, to talking about it. You actually yes. want couples to practice. Yes. What do you find is the benefit, Laura, <laughs> if a couple is able to openly talk about it, dialogue around this delicate subject, mm -hmm. what's the payoff down the road for this couple and for this marriage? Well, like I just said a minute ago, I mean, if you don't have the ability to talk about sex, you're going to have a really hard time fixing addressing it and talking and talking about it is kind of a two-part thing we need it to be a little bit more of an accessible topic like I'm so grateful that you were are willing to talk about it because think about how rarely people see two intelligent confident not awkward people talking about sex and not fainting <laughs> and so people need to have that topic be a little more accessible a little more open but then they need to also then as a couple being able to talk about it and that can be things like this is why I have questions in my book so that they can talk about what did you learn about sex growing up? Uh, what positive uh, messages did you pick up? What negative messages did you pick up? So it's it's a kind of a global mm -hmm. change and then also a conversation. Here. How much does expectation play into this? We talked about the Hollywood view of the honeymoon that doesn't always play out for, for yes. young couples. Are, is expectation a huge part of this conversation or should it be? Yes, so this is why it's my fourth piece that's just kind of a have to even though people it makes no sense to people usually but if couples do not have a little bit of conversation about what they expect that the honeymoon will be like then you've got to a man and a woman think very differently about sex and what they think will happen on a honeymoon and if there isn't some conversation this is how you create honeymoon horror stories and my hope is that we can just stop creating honeymoon horror stories and have a positive even if not perfect honeymoon
Yeah. And with these four things, they can do that. Where can we get the book, Laura? It should be everywhere now, but people can find it easiest at strengtheningmarriage.com. Well, congratulations on the yes. new release, and thanks for breaking the ice, so to speak, and doing yeah. so tastefully and respectfully. We appreciate it. You betcha.